Hi. Um, so I, I, I apologize for kicking off this really great conference in Germany and not speaking in German. Um, and I'm pretty sure that I just got introduced, so I apologize. <laughs> I apologize if I repeat anything, but uh, I'm kind of making some assumptions here. Um, so yes, my name is Elizabeth, and uh, I, I've kind of been in the Plone community actually for a very long time. I just was one of those hidden integrators that just hid in the backgrounds for about six years uh, until two years ago, and now I'm the most annoying thing that ever happened to the community, I think, because uh, I just sit and complain all the time. Um, <laughs> but I really care about Plone, and I really love coming and giving talks. Um, and I, I'm also in the framework team, so uh, basically uh, changes to Plone and Core um, come through me and a group of us, and we, we sit there and we decide what's good for the community and all this stuff. So I really like to take this opportunity to talk to you guys about what we actually do, what our process is and is not, and um, kind of what, what I think the future is going to be for, for Plone coming up from that perspective. Um, one really important thing, though, that I do want to bring up is that I was a developer for a very long time, but in the past two years, I've just basically switched over to project management. So in this talk, I'm going to talk a lot about development, and I'm going to talk about developers. And, and, and I think if you're making decisions and you're, you're one of these people who's like, I'm not, I don't care what developers think, um, I really want you to hang in here, because in the end, it is about you. Like, this talk really isn't for developers. It's for decision makers. Um, and and I, it's going to seem like it's not, but I promise I'll come back. So just hang in there. I'll get there. Um, the, this talk cannot be copyrighted. Um, so uh, one really quick thing, though, that I will bring up is that I'm going to make a lot of things sound like statements and facts and all this stuff. Um, but this is really a very highly opinionated talk. Um, the, this is not a representation of my clients or my company or anything like that. Um, so if you hear something and you're like, well, that doesn't make sense, it probably doesn't. And just go with it. <laughs> um, so let's talk about Plone 4, because really Plone 4 is the, pl the, the thing that we've been waiting for in Plone for, we waited for a very long time. Um, lots of reworking, lots of modernization, not only in the front end, but in the back end as well. Um, we're current re latest releases 4.1, but 4.2 is in beta 2 right now. Um, if you're, sl you're slightly um, okay with taking a little bit of a riskier beta, it's a great release. I really recommend you go download it and upgrade right now. Um, and and what, one of the things that's made me so excited about 4, the, the whole 4.x release process, is that we're com continuing to modernize Plone, which is 10 years old, um, you know, ripping out pieces that don't work and putting in pieces that do, and really addressing some of these problems that we've had in the past um, with Plone 2, 5, and Plone 3, um, and finally getting to a place where I think a lot of us are, as developers are very happy, um, uh, or happy to start actually moving from. Um, some of the things that we saw in the 4.x release, in 4.1, we saw the whole commenting system get kind of reworked. Um, it actually works like a commenting system should. Uh, we saw a new theming approach, uh, something more uh, approachable for people who um, have, uh, have specifically have themers working for them, uh, and something that's a little bit easier and more approachable. Um, in 4.2, which you're going to see, uh, it hopefully is going to be released in the next couple of weeks into a, a, an RC, a release candidate, uh, you're going to see Plone at that search, which is really great uh, improvements in searching, uh, better UI, better backend, uh, really just phenomenal uh, overhaul of collections. And I think that some of the developers are here, and so I just want to say thank you guys, because they were so needed, and they're going to be so great. And it's going to help everybody else. Um, we, we also already uh, have basically collected everything for the 4.3 release. Uh, we're waiting on a few things to get finished, and some of them are going to get finished at this sprint. So I'm so excited, you guys. Thanks. Um, so we really uh, have a release manager who is really, really busy and really knocking this stuff out. In 4.3, you're going to see dexterity uh, by default. Dexterity by default. Oh. <laughs> dexterity by default. OK, there we go. Um, so you're going to see dexterity included by default, which um, is, gonna re is a faster uh, imp uh, replacement, uh, I hate to say replacement, but replacement for archetypes. Um, so we're really going to go into a new content type system uh, that, that is very nice user, front end user interface and it will give us a lot of, um, sorry. Is there a volume down? Um, okay. 
so that, that's going to give us, and not only as developers, but as end users, a lot more power than what we had before. Um, and also, plone.app.event. event. Go guys, go, uh, who are sprinting here. Uh, we're going to actually have recurrence, uh, fixing calendars, things like that. So that's kind of what's happening in the front end, like things for the user. Um, in the back end, we're, we're really chugging along as well. Um, we've really switched our, our modes uh, in terms of packaging. We've repackaged everything. Everything is egg-based now. Um, keeping up with Zope releases, keeping up with Python releases. We're not going to pay the technical debt that we had to pay for the past few years. So there's a really big mentality change, and we really, uh, on the framework team, are really trying to keep that going. Um, there's other things, too, that we're doing, like st starting to standardize APIs, uh, which were dramatically changing. Um, uh, as we went from Plone 2.5 to Plone 4, um, we had so many different APIs because we had so many things happening at once. We were backwards compatible. It was really hard to keep up. But now we're really focusing on standardizing a APIs and um, doing more things like how do we approach new technologies like HTML5, things like that. So you're going to see a lot of that coming up in the rest of the 4.x release, all the releases. So um, this is just kind of a little thing of what's happening. Uh, a PLIP, for those who aren't familiar, is a plan improvement proposal. So these are big changes that come through. And we want to really update and update the core package and release to everybody. Um, so here we kind of see a trend of what's happening. Um, this is the, the number of releases or of PLIPs that came in, um, uh, how many actually got merged, accepted, and all that kind of stuff. But what's really important to see is this kind of U-shaped trend as the developer community picks up. Um, and, and we see that 4.3 is already starting to pick up more improvement, more involvement from different people. And our goal is for 4.4 to have 30 uh, bigger changes to Plone come in and go through the process. And that's something that if you're on the developers list or you see things, you'll start to see us be like, we have a goal. Like, we actually are trying to say, we want 30 changes coming through, and we're going to go find them. So if you get an email from me within the next 15 days or something like that, it's going to be because I'm like, I want you guys to come and change things. And this can't happen within core itself. It has to happen in the integrator circle. And I'll talk a little bit about that more. Um, so, uh, but additionally, not only are we handling more PLIPs, but the, plip rele but the release process has become faster and tighter. Um, so here, we're looking uh, on, on the right side, we're looking at how fast it is it's taking us to get releases out. So currently, um, Eric Steele, our release manager, is managing three releases. Um, and we, we have a six-month cycle that we're trying to stick to. Uh, we're slowly changing things, so we have slip-ups and things kind of happen. Um, but, but what we really see is that we're, we're turning out more and we're turning it out faster. Um, this isn't just community driven. This is things, uh, better tools. Uh, I think that there was a lot of emphasis put on moving into uh, automated testing. Continuous integration with Jenkins uh, has helped a lot. Moving over to GitHub has helped a lot. So not only um, are we working on building new things, but we're really concerned about our infrastructure. And you can see what's happening here. Um, and in addition, like one of the biggest things we have is getting from uh, alpha releases into uh, going live with or to a, to a real release. Um, and so now the emphasis is that we have, um, I'm also working on the QA team and uh, working with the release managers. Our, our thing now is we want to get people testing things sooner and we want to make this green bar shrink as much as we can so that we can turn out every four months a really nice release with a lot of features. Um, so basically, Plone 4 is all about modernization, um, taking things from the back end, in the back end, uh, from Python to Zope, and making sure everything is up to date, but also on the front end as well. Um, I, in, in terms of clips and where we're going with the 4.x release, um, I, I really think we need to continue this trend. There's still a lot of things that need to be modernized. Our widgets are from seven years ago. Our form widgets are from seven years ago. Many of them are just really old. Um, and we need people to come in and do these little things that everybody doesn't think about and they just complain about. So um, if, if you have a company um, or if you're just an individual, it doesn't matter. You know, if you can come in and help with these small little things, this is where we need to go. We need to finish off forms. Um, we still have problems that have never been addressed. Like, it's kind of embarrassing that we don't have an answer to video yet. Like, this is like 2012. Everything on the web is video, and people have video, and it's integrated into their lives. And we need people to come in and say, I'm going to Plip that I want this plip, and I'm going to do it, and I'm going to make a decision for the community. So there's a lot of different things, and I'm, I won't go through every single one of these. But you know, if you want to actually contribute to core and you don't know where to start or you're not sure if it's a good idea, come talk to me, and I will either give you the ideas that you need or at least pull you through the process. And anyone on the framework team, for that matter. 
Um, yeah, yeah, and these can be small. I think that um, when you say PLIP, it sounds like it has to be some kind of huge change. But Plume doesn't necessarily, I mean, we went through the huge change, right? We, we still have more huge change coming, but what we need to do now is clean up these little, these little things that have been hanging around. And all these people have spent all this time giving us the tools to do that. So I think as an integrator, um, as integrators and as people who use Plone, it's, it's our turn to kind of step in and say, okay, we'll clean up these little ends and let the other part keep going. Um, so that's a little bit about the, the, the Plone 4 process and what was happening there. Um, and when I was going through this, um, I was really trying to be positive, but I'm kind of not the most positive person. Um, but I, I really, and I'm going to kind of start to get into more of like a, argumentative mode, and it's going to seem like I'm dogging on Plone, but I'm not. And I, I think that if it seems like a lot of people are new faces here, and you should know that as a community, it's one of the most honest and amazing communities I've ever seen. And so that's how I'm going to approach this. Um, so that's kind of a little warning, I guess. Uh, so about in 2008, uh, on Stack Overflow, when Stack Overflow was new, uh, some guy came on and asked my favorite question about Plone ever. And he said, what could justify the complexity of Plone? And there was tons of responses, and there was all this defending, and we're transitioning, we have all these things, and we're backwards compatible, and all this stuff. Um, but I think that the great thing about his question was that he brought this really good point of, you know, you go in, and you, you, you go into a client, you set up a Plone install, and the first thing they say is, this is amazing, but can you just do this one thing? And you don't know what that one thing is going to be. You can never walk into that contract and know what that one thing is going to be. Um, and I think that I want to come back and see what the answers were and where we were and how far we are in progressing in that. This is 2008. Okay. Um, and so there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that people said, and this is just a little bit of a summary. You can read it if you want to. But basically, we're transitioning. We're backwards compatible. Um, you know, we're working on separating our packages. We have, need, we have an easier type system, okay? Um, but in three years, uh, there's some things we still haven't even addressed yet. Um, but we have addressed some really good things. Um, performance is great. If you haven't, uh, you know, if you're still running an old Plone 2.5 or Plone 3 site, you really have to get, get up to four, Plone 4, and 4.2 is even better. Um, there's a noticeable difference, even as a developer, uh, you really can feel the speed that's happening. Um, part of that is from really good contributions from the community, digging into the packages like daytime, going into the catalog and running optimization stuff. Um, but part of it too is just from keeping up with uh, packages that have been released. So um, in 4.3, you're also going to see Python 2.7 support. You know, it's really important, and we know this you know, after going through the process before, we know that we have to keep up with Python um, because the memory, the, the memory usage, the CPU usage, all that is free if we just make sure that we keep there. Um, in addition, Plone.app, caching by default is one of really, really great tool. Um, other people might know that as cache foo uh, is kind of what it was called back in the day. Um, but now there's a great interface, really easy to use. I really, really like it. Um, we also, uh, you know, what could justify the complexity? Well, we had archetypes. Uh, and for a lot of people, that, I mean, I'm actually not one of these people, but many people hated archetypes. Um, it, was, it was big, it was slow. Um, and now we have dexterity, uh, which is not in there now. Uh, but finally, three years later, uh, it's going to be in 4.3. Um, and it's going to give you uh, much smaller pieces. Um, it's very flexible, it's very fast. Your end user can create, um, not forms, but create types on their own. Uh, if, if you trust them enough to let them do that. Um, so, we're, and we really get into starting to reuse some of the technologies that already exist. We're not rolling our own. A really, really great um, package. So, we're, we're really addressing the complexity problem in terms of, well, now we're going to move on to something that's smaller so that we don't have to manage big, huge systems. Um, but we do have the complexity of interfaces at the same time. And um, I, I, I took a lot of quotes in this presentation from people, um, and I took their names off of them. Um, to protect the innocent. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> if any of these was from one of you guys, I, I apologize. But, um, you know, we still, we introduce dexterity and we introduce this great new system, this great new way of doing things. But once you get down to the core of it, like reusing the technology of Z Z3C form, it's still really uh, hard, really, really hard. So uh, 
you know, we're, we're trying to, three years ago we said, okay, these are, this is why we're complex, this is why maybe you're not ready to get into it, and we need to come, you know, we need to see, like, we need to follow this, and we say, why is it so complex, where are we still having complexity? So at the same time, in the exact same year, um, this is when people started doing presentations about Plone 5. Like, what is Plone 5? And it was like this beautiful, beautiful mistress. <laughs> and there was only one content type, and you could move things around in space <laughs> in 2008. And at that time, it was really innovative at that time. But that was three years ago. And the web has, you know, anybody who works in the web knows that the web changes like crazy. And um, it, we really fell behind there, I think. Um, there was a, so deco tiles, like, it, we really don't know what we have. In 2012, we don't know what we have now. Nobody knows what Plone 5 is. Um, and there's a, there's a frame, or a roadmap team, and apparently they know what it is. I, I'm not sure. Um, but I think that we need to talk about it more. Um, and that, that's one of the things that I'm really excited to be here and really say, like, I, I'm an integrator and I, I care about Plone 5. I'm not necessarily 100% active in development, but I really think that all of us should kind of get together and start saying, you know, let's figure it out as a community instead of relying on somebody to tell us what it is, okay? So this is what I think Plone 5 is. <laughs> um, so a, a little bit of a off track thing. And then we'll come back. Um, Plone has one of the best add-on communities I've seen. I did a lot of research for this talk, and I was going into plugins and how, how people work and complaints about working. And literally, in January, we had 20 new, 29 new add-ons on Plone.org. That's one add-on per day. Like that's pretty amazing. No other community really sees that. Um, and and it says a couple things. Like one. Uh, we're definitely picking up speed. You know, if we if we keep going at this rate, we're, we'll have almost 400 add-ons by the end of the year. And this is on Plo.org, where people don't even register packages anymore. Um, so I th we see this, but we also see this this problem that you know, Plone is still missing stuff. Obviously, if we're spending all this time making all these add-ons, we're missing things, um, and we need to come back and we need to get these people who are working on these add-ons. And you know, if you're one of these people, you know, really think like. Do, should this be in core? Like, why are we, do I, like, how many plugins do we need for video, for example? Like, we need to take this energy and move it back into the center of Plone. Um, and, and I'd like to say that this is a culture of suburbanites. Uh, we have, like, three developers in the middle of Plone really working hard and doing all these things, and everybody else, like, really supports them amazingly. Um, and these suburbanites, but you, you, we're doing everything on the fringe of Plone. And I really want to start encouraging people to come back to the center and really changing the core of what we're doing. Um, and that's, that's something that we can do in Plone 5. We can really encourage that, or Plone next. Um, and I think that there's a lot of discussion as well about is Plone a platform? Is it, is it, should it be sold out of the box, right? Should it be something that you just give to the user and we don't do anything. We use plugins, but we really don't do any customization. There's a lot of arguments and discussions about this. You know, is Plone a framework or is it a tool? And I think that what we see when we look at the add-on numbers is that Plone, Plone is a development framework and we have to look at it from that perspective. And until we really stop thinking about it as it's just something for the end users, we're gonna kill ourselves, right? We, we need to make Plone easier to develop on, okay? Um, and we want to see that continue. We need, in, in order to bring people in from the fringe, we must do that. Um, and I think that we have a very interesting culture of excuses as well. And that's why I brought up the stack uh, overflow question of what could justify the complexity of Plone. And, and you, you have people come, they're like, yeah, but this and this. And it's like, yeah, but we're getting there and we will. And at some point, it won't be complex. But now is the time. Like right now, all the tools are in our hands to answer all of those questions. And I think that Plone 5 could say, like, Plone 5 could be the non-complex Plone. Um, and I think that one of the, the there's, there's some really common excuses, and uh, I apologize, I'm not reading my slides. I hope that's okay, and I'll let you guys read them. Um, <laughs> so there's, there's kind of two different camps um, that I see in Plone. Um, and there's nothing meant by the, the color, the coloring, like none's, but one's not worse than the other one. Um, they're just very different points of views. Um, like in one camp, we have people who need extensibility, configuration, pluggability. Um, they do a lot of hard things, and Plume does a lot of hard things and makes these magic happen. Like this is why, um, despite complexity, the Plume community continues 
uh, growing slowly, but growing nonetheless, um, is because it really does make the hard things easy. Um, but then on the other side, we have the same old complaints that we've had for seven years, right? It's hard to do the easy things. It is really hard to do the easy things. Um, and, and, and we have to start listening to that. And we can't just dismiss people as being newbies or integrators or whatever. We have to really say, how can we make this easier for them to just program? You know, someone wants to come in, they want to put a terms of service on there in a browser. How do we make this easy for them? <laughs> so I really started uh, getting passionate about this because I volunteered to teach a Python class on web, fra web frameworks, and it's been an amazing experience. And if anybody can do something like this, I really encourage it. And I got to do that thing that we all want to do. You want to solve the same problem in three different frameworks or four different frameworks. And this was the, the, the idea we came up with. So was like, we need to teach people who've never te learned Python, never done CSS, maybe have a little bit of HTML background. We want to help them transition their careers and make them developers. How do we do that? Well, repetition, right? So we said, well, let's do this thing. Let's teach them the same thing, do the same task, which was making a to-do list in three different frameworks. And I think the really interesting thing that happened, one, was that I got to work with other syntax a lot. And there were times where I was super frustrated, and I was like, God, I just want to use build out, and I wanted to use these things. But there were other times where I was just like, the syntax is beautiful, and it's clear, and it's concise. And somebody at the end, after we did Django, they're like, Liz, you know, you're really into this Plone thing, and I know you're always talking about it, blah, blah, blah. Like, why don't we do this in Plone? And I was like, we can't. There's no way. We cannot make a to-do list in any sane amount of time in Plone that we could in other things. Now, if you're in the, in the camp that Plone is meant to be used out of the box, and you're giving it to your users, and that's it then that's fine. You know, it's not meant to be a to-do list. But I really agree with the user earlier that you don't know what that, that person wants. You know, maybe, maybe they do want a task management system. And we can't write a task management system into what we have now. So, but I don't think that it's unsolvable, right? I think that the, the easiest part of this is that all this is solvable. The framework is there and the tools are there. We just need to put a little syntactic sugar on what we have. Now, and, and, I'm, and by that, for those who are aware, I, know, I don't mean say, like, OK, Grok. Let's move to Grok and let's use that. Like, we really need to think about how can we do little things that will make people productive, right? And it, this is where I'm talking about. This is where the manager's part coming in, because I've moved in there, and I've seen it happen. I've been a developer, and I know what developers think, and you just, we could plow through it. But as a manager, when I see commits come in, I say, that cost me $300. And that matters, right? We need to make things easier. Um, so this syntax right here, uh, for those that are developers, was something that in all the three frameworks that we did this to-do list in, it almost 100% echoed just like this. There were slight changes, but almost everything worked this way. And I, it's not saying, I'm not saying that this is how Plone should be, but I really sat down and I was talking, so Spanky, um, Spanky uh, hosted the conference with me, and we were in San Francisco, and both of us were Plone 2.5. We'd been around forever. We did the Plone 4 switch and grouched about it the whole time. But we sat down and we said, you know, if we could make, you know, it's really hard to make a browser view. Like, you just want to put a page up. And it's like, if we could do it the way we wanted, what would that look like? And this is what we came up with. And it was just all, this, all these other frameworks coming in from going through this exercise and saying, what's the best part of every other framework, and how can we reuse that? Because you know they do that to us. And, you know, Django took a lot of inspiration for us in, their, in the latest release with browser views. So they, they, and every other framework does that. They use us as their, like, testing ground. But we need to do the same. We need to go back and we need to say, you know, they saw this and what we were doing, but let's look at what they're doing, too. And so I really am... am a very big advocate of everything that's coming in to, to Plone, and even as add-ons or as in core, or you're working on your own project, you know, how would your developers, how do they want to use the system? And we don't have a culture of asking. And I really hope that, you know, by the end of this talk, you can start to get into that, and you can start asking people. Um, so, so lack of syntactic sugar. It's really hard to do easy things. Um, so again, as a manager, uh, getting the site root is impossible. Um, I, I've gotten, I've run, I've probably written these three lines of codes 300 times. And every single time, I have to go look it up because I cannot remember this syntax. 
Now think, now see, now, now let's go into dollars, right? That's $15 for me to go look up on my rate. Because I had to go find the URL and remember, oh, it's a collective docs, there's an unplugged, I don't fucking know. Um, so uh, we had to stop that, that's crazy. And this is my favorite one, <laughs> upgrade sets. It is six files and 20 lines of code using recommended practices to add a new CSS style sheet. That's embarrassing, that's terrible. We should be embarrassed by that. Seriously, it is impossible. And these are things that we can fix. Like we can fix them all. We just need to focus ourselves around them and would say, let's stop worrying about deco. Let's stop worrying about tiles. Like there are people handling that, but as an integrator community, this is our money. This is our pocket. Like this is stuff that we could make easier. And not only would it be easier, we'd be more productive. Um, yeah, the D word. <laughs> There's another D in clone, and it's called documentation. Um, I think that we also blame documentation, but fuck that shit, man. Our APIs suck. So if we take time to make nice APIs, then we don't have to spend so much time writing documentation. I mean, how many different articles do you have to go through to find the right piece? But it's like all that time writing could just be spent making it better, uh, making it intuitive. Like, how do you delete something? Manage underbar, add, you know, delete. How about we just call it delete? It would be great. <laughs> um, <laughs> you'll hear a lot of this from me on the dev list as well. It's my goal for this year, so. Um, <laughs> um, this is the worst name for this ever, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I like to think of this as developer-driven development. Um, and, and, and for those that aren't on IRC, um, Spanky has, he used to be in Plone 2.5 and now he's in Plone 4 and he basically every day is in the Plone IRC channel like, this is so stupid, annoying everybody all day. And people are just so tired. They're like, will he just shut up? And even me, I mean, I have a lot of patience and I love him, but it's like, God, he's just asking so many, but he's so right. That's the hard thing is he's so right that there is no, like he spent eight hours trying to figure out how to make a field hidden, a hidden field. You know, that's embarrassing. So if we really think to ourselves and we think, you know, how would we want him to use the code? And we think about the API first and not in the API in terms of REST API, I just mean as in like, how would you, they want to use it? Somebody who's your average Plone developer. And average Plone developers are fucking good. They're good. Like, it's not like we're saying average PHP developer. Oh. <laughs> right, they're great. So if the average Plone developer has problems making a hidden field in a form, there's something wrong with what we're doing. We have to do it. We can, we can move forward. So I think that we have this checklist, right? Every time you submit a, Plone, a product to Plone.org, you have to go through a checklist, self-certified. Thanks, Joel Spolsky, you know, he made this popular. Um, but we have to think, can this guy use your API? Can he use your code? And he, I've talked to him about this, and he says, anytime you want, he will look at it and tell you whether or not he can use it. <laughs> anytime, he's open, contact him. Um, <laughs> and once we start thinking that way, we might actually get something that's usable and that makes happy developers, right? Um, and Plone people are great people. They, we are happy developers, but we tend to be grouchy. Um, and there's reasons. Like, <laughs> this is my favorite quote, and I'm gonna say it out loud because it's so great, is Plone means getting hands dirty and drinking away your sorrows once you finish the day. And the thing is, is that we have all this grouchiness about it and we're like, gah, 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 and we all sit and we grouch, but Plone is so great that we put up with it because there's something so awesome there that all of us stick around and we keep coming to conferences and we keep doing things. So, you know, it's great. We just need to make it easier a little bit. Um, and now we're really getting into the management part, right? So I need to hire four Plone developers by June. This is a problem for me right now. I cannot find Plone developers and they're too fucking expensive, right? The rent is too goddamn high. Um, so we, we should not be so expensive. Um, and it's really good to be a developer when you're there because you're like, yeah, we have a great lifestyle, blah, blah, blah. But from my perspective now, I can't hire people in any sane way and meet my budget. I can't meet my budgets, right? Uh, we can't work fast enough. 
uh, if you're if you're thinking about pulling stuff, this is really important. You know, uh, most decisions in tech aren't technical decisions. They're decisions like this. I, you know, uh, there's no such thing as um, a Zio database manager. I can hire a MySQL database manager. You can pick one up out the street, fifty dollars an hour. <laughs> Nobody knows Zio. So this is, you know, this is the stuff that we really need to start thinking of. Um, and, and furthermore, I can't go to somebody and being like, hey, I got a plume job. And they're like, oh, that's that thing on Zope. That sucks. Like, there is no motivation for somebody to switch. The only people, I literally, I'm not kidding. At some point, I started finding .NET developers who were frustrated and being like, it's not .NET. <laughs> it's not .NET. Come on. But they're great. They were perfect phone developers because to them, the complexity went down. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, but then, they, then of course, they get into Python, and now they're all Django developers. They left. So <laughs> I, I shit you not. I just had a guy leave. He's a Django developer now. Um, so it's bad for business. A bad API and a complex API is bad for business. You can't hire people, and you can't fire people. And you know what? Firing people is important because sometimes people suck. And you don't want them on your team. They pollute the team. But you are tied to that person because you can't get rid of them. There's nobody else. You have to make it work. But it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way. No, you know, no other Python framework would let that happen. Well, that was a little broad. I might regret that later, but anyway. Um, we, as a community of integrators, we should be flooding the market with clone developers, driving the cost down. You know, it's people, you, and, and I'm not saying this because I think that, you know, people aren't making a good living and they're really great and they're always, you, you know, good people will always make a great salary. But it should be really easy to find them and you owe it to your client to make sure that if they dump you, they can go find another girlfriend, right? And that's hard right now. Uh, I have a client that I hate. I hate him. I cannot dump them, though, because I feel so bad that I don't know anybody qualified to take over that thing. So I continue and I make it work, right? They're awful. Um, and furthermore, I'm not saying that we, every developer that we produce uh, needs to be the best developer ever either. Like, I think as a culture, we, like, we, we have such good developers that we really don't think, we don't want an average Plone developer. You don't want an average Python developer. We want, we want these really great people, and we do want great people. But we need to start accepting that not everybody is going to understand interfaces. And not everybody is going to know what the fuck a Git multi-adapter is. And I mean, that is hard. That's a hard concept for a lot of people. So if we, if we as integrators, come in and make this, this API easier, I say it's better for business. Uh, and we have to do it. Furthermore, not only does it help your business, you're making things faster, you're doing it cheaper, but now we actually have code that's maintainable by an average Plone developer. So one of the, I get a lot of private emails and I love it. And I love that people contact me and they're like, you know, I'm really nervous and you know, you seemed like really nice when I met you at the conference and I want to get involved and blah, blah, blah. And then I say like, oh, why don't you just go do this ticket? And they're like, they freak out. They freak out because the, the, it's so complex, they can't get in there and fix the bugs. They're nervous, right? And so part of that we can fix by mentoring and all this stuff. But really, really, to make stuff maintainable, it has to be understandable by the average developer in your community, OK? <laughs> Uh, so this is communication problem, right? Um, I, I, I have these private emails and I have a thousand private conversations about all these things and I've never seen somebody give a talk and say, here's why and we need to really do this. And so this is my goal this year is to start preaching this problem and, and it's a communication problem, right? But it's a good one because we respect each other so much. Everybody respects each other so much that they're afraid they're going to offend somebody. Um, but I'm just going to start offending. So, sorry. <laughs> because we have to do that. We have to make it OK. And, and, and we have to make sure that you know, core devs are not the scapegoats. Like, the complexity is not a developer problem. It's a community problem. right? We, all, it's, we are all responsible for the current complexity problem. And if we stand up and we give talks and we go and to local meetups and we say, I really hate this, and we just keep saying it, it will change. Like, people care. They really care. They just don't know. Um, I mean, or they don't have a business use case, and they just didn't even think about that. 
So let's not blame the devs, let's not talk about it. And I think my favorite San Francisco thing is, is this psychological, like everybody's like, you don't argue, you say, I feel like blah because blah. And so Spanky and I sat down and he was like, you know, I feel like smashing my computer because these fucking upgrade steps don't work. And this is what happens, you know? <laughs> they don't work. So if we start talking like that and we really take this approach of, you know, don't, don't blame the devs, but just say, this is my problem and this is why. And God, give them a use case and they will fix it. They really will. So I think Plone 5, and we are actually coming back around to the original point of this topic. I think that Plone 5 should be the Plone 5 of no excuses. Plone no excuses. Like, we can answer all those questions. We can get rid of the complexity. We have the tools to do it. We just need to do it, right? And we are a duocracy, and you can do it. And I, I, I hope that we do. Um, so really, you know, the whole, all this jibber-jabber is all about modernization, right? Plone 4 was a really big deal because we modernized the user experience. We made we did everything we needed to do to make it performant. We did everything that we needed to do to make things happen. I think that Plone 5 can modernize the developer experience because that matters. And it's money. It is money. It doesn't just come down to waiting for somebody to do it. You know, we as integrators need to do this. Um, that's it. So <laughs> I really hope that, uh, that if you have frustrations, and I will post something on the developers list right after this talk, um, asking people to start writing it down. Give us business cases, give us, give us use cases. Tell me how much time you're spending making X, Y, and Z, and we'll do it. I mean, I have people who have all dedicated to doing, the San Francisco Plum Meetup is only doing this now. Like, this is our goal for this year, is to make the easy things easy. And if we can do that, our community won't just, like, we're not, we're definitely not dying. There's a lot of people who's like, oh, the community's dying, it's getting, it's not. I mean, all the statistics in here show that it's not. But it's not exploding. It's really kind of homeostasis. But if we make the easy things easy, I think that we can really have something to, to give to people. Because what we have is so good, we just need to make it look like that. So I hope that you can go back. And I hope you can make an argument to your boss, an argument to the client, and say, we need to give this piece of code back. We need to make shortcuts. We need to do this. It is money. And there's a reason that you can do it. And that's why I say this is about business. This is a business talk. And if you're new, which I see a lot of new people here, and you're just picking up Plone, start that way. Don't get in the habit. Don't get into the Plone habit of putting it into the excuses bag. You know, let's, let's go for it. So thank you very much. I'm not actually going to give questions, because uh, I really want a response in a blog. I want responses in mailing lists. I want you guys to go up and give a talk. Even if you're just giving a talk and complaining the whole time, let's start talking loudly about this. And together, we can all change this. So let's do it. So anyway, thank you very much. And enjoy the very wonderful conference. I'm very excited myself. <laughs>